Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Greg's Restorations. Here today we're with this 1975 Toyota FJ55 Land Cruiser. Pretty rare, we don't really get many of these trucks in. They were really kind of a rust bucket up here in the Northeast, more than the FJ40s. We never really see them. They're not super popular. Um, they are becoming kind of popular again. We've had uh, two come in in the last year versus, you know, like 10 FJ40s that we normally do. They're unique, they're not for everybody, but they're bringing some value again. And like check out like on the bigger, bring a trailer website and stuff like that. They are bringing, bringing some, some okay money now. So people are starting to soak some money into it. The customer has done a lot of work on this vehicle himself over the years. Uh, this is pretty much a barn find. This vehicle was found uh, locally and the customer did some work on it and then needed our assistance to kind of finish it up just because you know the daily life of everybody is just so busy and nobody has any time and kids and so we stepped in and got this thing up to where it needed to be to be able to drive it around uh, it is not a full restoration it's more of just like a survivor these fj55s do have a lot of fj40 parts like steering wheel heater box or switches so they do carry a couple, they swap a little couple of parts. The drivetrain, the transmission, transfer case are all, all the same. Uh, this vehicle is, has a 4.2 liter 2F in it. That's what came stock in it um, with the four speed transmission. This vehicle doesn't win world speed records, but it gets out of its own way. So, you know, a lot of people will swap V8s into them, but yeah, this is good for what the guy needs. And what he's, what he's playing with it is, his plan is to you know, drive around town and enjoy with his daughter and his wife. So one of the nicest things about this truck is the chrome grill on it. Every one of these trucks that I see, the chrome grill is rusted and they are so expensive to restore and have re-chromed or virtually impossible just for the pitting and stuff like that. This truck, the grill that's on it is spotless. I mean, it has a couple little blemishes in it, but it's like, it's worth its weight in gold so uh last truck we did we had uh we ended up painting the grill and doing the toyota letters in pink because the customer was um, was a girl so we did some little accents on the truck for her Her truck was white and we did the wheels over and uh did some pink pinstriping on the wheels for her and just made it made it her own one of the reasons why these trucks weren't so popular in the 70s was because the American market was held by the big three. From like the teens to the 90s or 80s, you know, the big three, Ford, Chevrolet, and Chrysler held the market. You know, didn't want to buy anything from overseas. Everything was buy American made and support the United States. The older generation didn't really like them because of, I'm guessing, Pearl Harbor. You know, these are Japanese trucks and, you know, growing up, they didn't like the Japanese. So, you know, everybody's kind of gotten over those times. And like a friend of mine that I've known for a long time, he just said that, you know, like, if you had a Toyota back in the day, they thought something was wrong with you if you were from that generation. Just cool to see these trucks driving around. You know, they're actually a really good truck. They're actually really bulletproof. The drivetrains are awesome. They're really overbuilt. We brought the vehicle in, we did, serviced all the brakes, rebuilt the axles front and rear. Um, you know, drained all the fluids, changed all the fluids, had the radiator record. Um, it had a Weber carburetor on it. I'm not a super fan of the Weber carburetors, but you know, some people like them. Uh, so we went back with like an original OE style carburetor so we could put back on the original air cleaner. So we restored an original air cleaner, painted that, put that on. Did some engine servicing, oil pan, tune up, uh, gaskets. One of the hardest parts to find was the original throttle linkage. Uh, when they did the Weber conversion, they threw away all the, the original throttle linkage to um, the throttle pedal. So we had to get everything from our friends up at Cruiser Parts up in New Hampshire. They ended up having some stuff and then we ended up finding a parts truck. So we ended up buying one of those for you know, a decent price and now we have some parts if we need them for this and vehicles coming up uh, she's a gem you'll have to check it out in the video <whistles> vehicles got 
just over 100,000 miles on it. Uh, the speedometer has turned over. It says 1,365 miles. I don't think that's correct. I think it has 100,000, 100, just over that. So, um, you know, the older vehicles, they didn't go over. They went to 99999 and then went back to zero. So um, I think it has over 100,000 miles, but, you know, there's no real way to tell. Sandblasted and painted all the wheels. Uh, factory pewter, along with putting a, a set of 33-inch BF Goodrich all-terrain tires, just like we do on all of our builds. Uh, they're just the BF Goodrich tires just has a nice aggressive look, good on the road and they're good off-road. Just the only thing with the tires is, you know, when you're when you have a fully restored vehicle and you're driving down a dirt road, you come out of the dirt road, you need to pick the rocks out of the tires when the when the tires are brand new. They will sling rocks into the inner side of your fenders and dent them from the inside out so take that as a, um, a learning lesson from this video another one of the reasons why i like this truck is it's a good driver you know the paint's not perfect on it and the chassis isn't as clean as a fully rotisserie restoration but the truck is solid it's not a rust bucket when it was found in storage it was taken out and cleaned up but you can drive it down the road you drive it down the road you drive it in the rain take the kids in it take the dogs in it. They say uh, shiny paint causes stress. It's a solid truck, but it's not afraid to get a scratch in it. One of the coolest things that we did on this truck was the customer had a factory PTO winch, and we ended up installing it on the front of the truck. It took some quite a bit of work because you would need frame extensions, and we didn't have them. So we had to build frame extensions to bring the bumper off the front of the truck so we could fit the, the PTO winch on there. We did supply off of our parts truck. We had an original front bumper. We sandblasted that, restored that, and put it on that. The front bumpers and rear bumpers on these trucks were really, really hard to come by. They just were all thrown away. You can get aftermarket stuff. Eventually, we're gonna build a rear bumper for this out of some pieces we got, just to make it authentic. It has like a, just like a little push bumper on the back with a, with a high lift jack mount. Interior is all original from my, my understanding. I think it has new door panels. Like I said, this truck is a true survivor. We also added a new old stock conifer roof rack. Pretty wild on the roof of this truck. It's it's really big, but it's cool. Um, something you don't really see. Conifer went out of business, I believe, in the 90s. On one of my other builds, I've been collecting parts for an FJ40 build to build a, a conifer truck with all of the accessories that they offered. Kind of like an 80s build for an FJ40. Conifer made a whole bunch of cool accessories. They made bumpers, they made winch mounts, they made jerry can holders, they made roof racks, they made steps. They made all sorts of cool stuff. It's kind of a shame that they, they're no longer because they were kind of the pioneer in making these FJ40 parts before they were so popular. One of the, another cool feature is it has a factory row up power window so you have a switch on the dash the thing rolls up and down there's a switch on the dash you roll down the window put up the window Check out our other Toyota restoration builds. You can also check us out on the web at our new website, gregstoyotarestorations.com.